Hello, this is a Delphini Group training video. I'm going to talk about how to evaluate a medical research study. The reason why we have a blank page here is because your mind should actually be a little bit blank when you look at it because you don't want to be influenced by it unless you know the results are likely to be true. This is going to be at a very high level. This is going to be very, very short. Our focus is on cause and effect of therapies, screening, and prevention. You can download these slides at our website, delphini.org, and you go over to the left, and you scroll down on the left side, and you look for free online tutorial, and then you'll see a place where you can click on that and get video and these video slides. Delphini Group comprises myself, I'm Sherry Ann Streit, and my family practitioner partner, Dr. Mike Stewart, and we do a lot of work evaluating medical science and training others to evaluate it, and we're also authors. For more information on the topic that we're covering today, see our book at delphini.org for basics for evaluating medical research studies that will go into greater depth. First of all, anything that is using medical science should be evaluated for whether or not that medical science is actually reliable and useful to a patient. Shorthand, are the results likely to be true? If likely to be true, are they actually useful? A lot of people fear that they need to know a lot about statistics. It's actually rare that Mike and I have a statistical question when we're reading a medical research study, and when we do, we ask a biostatistician. We are not going to have that skill level, and you probably aren't either, and most of the time you don't need that. When you're reading a medical research study, you're looking for anything that leads away from the truth. And there are two large buckets. One is bias, and that is anything that systematically leads away from the truth when we're talking about research studies. And the word systematically there just means that it's not by random chance. So you're looking for bias, and you're looking for chance. The other thing you're looking for is whether the results are actually going to be useful. Useful means actually useful to a patient, and so we want outcomes that are going to show benefit to patients in the areas of morbidity, mortality, symptom relief, emotional, mental, or physical functioning, and health-related quality of life. And then the next thing that you look at is how big are the results? Are they really likely to benefit people or not? Medical research studies should give you an abstract, which is a summary of the published article. They should give you background. They should explain their methodology. They should give you information about their statistical analysis. They should give you results both for efficacy and for safety. And then often you get discussion and conclusions. What you need to be aware of is discussions and conclusions are actually authors' opinions and should not necessarily be taken as fact. So here's what you do with medical research studies. You evaluate the research question. You look at the aim of the study. You look at the outcomes that they're evaluating to see if they're really going to be useful to patients. Then you look at internal validity, which is the subject of this video, and that is looking for bias or chance as potential explanations for study results instead of truth. You examine the results if it looks like the study is likely to be true. And then you worry about what's going on in the real world, and that's the external validity question. How likely is it that these results are going to be true in your patients or your patient population? And in our work teaching people how to critically appraise medical research studies, one of the most frequent questions we get is, how can I actually evaluate a medical research study fast? And we're going to show you just exactly that. The joke is that when we read a study, we don't really read the study. Okay, yes, we actually really do read studies, but we read studies using a method that gets us far fast. The first thing you have to do is be really prepared, and so we're going to show you where you can get some tools to get started. Mike and I make a lot of our work freely available at our website. You can contact us from our website, and you can get a lot of resources. 
Immediately below our main menu to the right is our Quick Navigator. And the very first item on there is Tools and Educational Library. So you want to go there. We have lots of tools available at that link. For our purposes for this video, there are two that we recommend that you download. One is our Delphini Pearls for the basics of evaluating superiority studies having to do with therapies. And for all people, we recommend downloading our short study validity checklist. In addition to these tools being available at our Tools and Educational Library, we also are putting links available to you at the online tutorial that we showed you. And we'll show you that page again at the end, and then a reminder that you can download these slides. One of the keys to doing critical appraisal work fast is to be really familiar with what it is that you need to evaluate. Studies have shown that you can develop a new habit by doing something daily for 21 days. The joke is that we don't know if that study is valid. However, if you look at our professional tool every day for, say, 21 days, it's low risk of harm, it's no cost, and easy to do. So why not? So we suggest that you look at that, get yourself really familiar with the things that you're going to evaluate when you're evaluating a medical research study. Your very first question is whether or not the study design is appropriate to the research question. When it comes to medical research, there are two major buckets of study design. Studies are either observational, which means that we just observe what happens naturally, or experiments, which means that we are intervening in some way. And a key to understanding whether something is an observation or an experiment is whether or not the patient or their physician made a choice. If they made a choice, it's an observation. If they did not make a choice, then it's an experiment. And for anything having to do with medical interventions, which is the topic of this video, you want only experiments, the gold standard of which, for very important reasons, will be randomized controlled trials. There are a few exceptions to everything that we tell you. In this instance, that would be the case of all or none results. All or none results are extremely rare, but they have to do with when, for example, everybody died before a particular treatment, and then after the treatment, almost everybody lives. So let's talk about some general features of clinical trials and a reminder that this is very short and very, very high level. The primary elements of medical research studies include whether or not you've got comparable groups to study, performance, what happens to them, what happens in terms of data collection, and then what happens in terms of assessment. And so in evaluating a medical research study, what you're doing is you're looking for bias and chance to distort results in any of these categories to determine whether or not the results are likely to be true or not. I will talk about a few of the biases here, but you really want to spend time looking at the two tools that I suggested you download to get a bigger picture of all the various biases that you want to look at. A prime consideration in selection bias is whether or not the groups that are being compared are actually alike. Another really important consideration is how people are actually assigned to their study groups. There are many things to consider when evaluating performance bias. Two very large buckets are whether or not something is leading away from truth for the entire population studied, such as a bad measurement instrument, the other thing that is very critical is, are there any differences between the groups that are studied? One of the very biggest categories in performance bias is whether or not blinding was likely to be successful. And that means blinding of the subjects, everyone working with the subjects, and everyone working with the subjects' data. Traditionally, this phase of evaluating studies is looking for attrition bias but it's really about the quality of data that you have. So questions are things like, what's the quality of the measurement instruments? How is it collected? Do you have missing information? An assessment bias is all about evaluating the results. So get familiar with your tool, because now we're going to rock and roll. What you want to do is you want to have in your head some abbreviations for key critical appraisal considerations. 
because what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to take your study, do a markup on it that's going to speed things along for you. So, for example, AIM is already short, so that's easy to do. RAND for randomization, INTV for intervention, etc., etc. So I have little abbreviations for all the critical appraisal elements that I want to look for when I'm evaluating a research study. So now we're going to show you how to make a really quick assessment. At the top of the learner's tool we had you download is a quick assessment. So here are some questions that you can use to determine whether or not you want to actually spend time looking at a study. If the study is worth your time, you want to now hunt for bias and chance. What Mike and I do is we take our medical research study and all the little codes that we have in our head for things that are important elements to consider and we just start marking up the study with those abbreviations that I recommended that you develop in your head. And Mike does this online, I do it by hand. Either way, this helps critical appraisal go really, really quickly and we're going to show you another little video demo of me doing this. Sherry Strait is now going to show us how she does a critical appraisal. So a main thing is that what I do is I move fairly quickly for a first pass. So I'm just going to kind of demo that. So what I start doing is I just start scanning through the document and what I'm doing is I'm looking for anything that's a critical appraisal item. Here they say double blind multi-center randomized control superiority trial. Great, but I want to see details so I don't bother to mark that. Here we've got aim. And here we've got a primary endpoint. Okay, again, they're repeating randomized double blind, but I have to actually see what they're doing, but we see it's a multi-center trial. Here's some inclusion criteria. Here's some diagnosis definitional stuff. Exclusion criteria. Okay, computer. Computerized random number generator, so I'm at random there. And then we see Collins Center, there's concealment job allocation. Baseline characteristics, now I just scan to see if they're similar. I also tend to look for what they've chosen to report. Here we have provided by the manufacturer identical pills, so there's blinding. All study staff, those working with data blinded. Okay, here's a definition of an event. Okay, we've got some measurement information here. Stage one. Okay, patients provided with an icy drink, standardized, blah, blah, blah. So here's the intervention. Okay, episodes are documented during the visit. And then happily here I see they mentioned blinded observers, so I've got another fragment of blinding information. Okay, safety outcomes. Okay, patients evaluated. There's another measurement item. Now we start into the results. Okay, we see some patients not completed the trial, so some discontinuation information. And then I take a look and see are the groups similar. In terms of patient disposition, if they aren't, that's not necessarily a problem, but that's important information for me. If they were, I might make a little triangle there. That means for me that I've got an action to take that I need to go back and check on that. And here we've got the number of events possible, so that's related to re uh, results. More safety information, they're describing the safety population. Okay, they did it appropriately. Here we've got appearance. Summary of the results. Ooh, nice big difference. Okay, here we've got more safety information. can look at a table of safety events and compare that. And then what I do is I take my critical appraisal checklist and then I scan through that and what I'm looking for is anything that didn't get addressed in the study that should have gotten addressed. And let's pretend they didn't tell me assessors were blinded. I would go back here, here write negative and I'd write no blind assessor or something like that to tell me what it was that I found that was a problem. And now I've got a marked up copy that I can go back and look at all the instances they talk about blinding, for example, 
and I can take a more leisurely look if I want. But that gets me pretty far for a first pass. Important word of advice to look at not only what's going on in the tables, but also to look at the text. Sometimes you get surprised that things are not consistent. This is not atypical, unfortunately. When we're done with our markup, we take our critical appraisal checklist, the professional tool, and we review it to see if there's anything that they have not addressed. An important point is that they have to tell us details of things like randomization. If they only say it's randomized but don't give us the details, then it goes on the list of threats to validity. This method is really fast. It's very efficient. You notice things as you go. We mark negative items, questions, any needs for action steps as we go. It becomes our documentation. When we are done reviewing our study, we're concerned whether or not it is at high risk of bias or medium or low risk of bias or if it's uncertain risk of bias. And so we tag it in some way with some mark like that and it may be that's specific to the entire study or certain outcomes. And we document our study review by taking the abstract and then sometimes we use our professional critical appraisal tool and insert threats to validity within that tool or just make a list like we're showing here. We are also concerned about chance findings, but also be aware that if they have not found something statistically significant, it might be that there are actual true differences and they just didn't have enough people. And then we get to be happy. Honestly, some studies take a long time to review, but a lot of studies can be done in fairly short order, and this method goes a long way to help everything be much more efficient, no matter what kind of study you're reviewing. And again, this is at a really high level. We've got a great book that can help you, Basics for Evaluating Medical Research Studies. We have other books available, all on Amazon.com, um, for Pharmacy and Therapeutics Committees, Medical Technology Assessment, doing clinical improvement as well as clinical guidelines. Um, we have a book for manufacturers, in fact, and then importantly, we have a book for patients. And we have lots and lots of information available for free on our website, which we affectionately term as Sherry's File Cabinet. You can find our books by clicking on a book cover at delphini.org, our website, and that includes our book for patients. You can also learn more about our books at delphinigrouppublishing.com, but also again at our delphini.org website. And if you go to the website for the patient book, you will have access to freely available patient resources as well. You can download these slides at our website delphini.org and you go over to the left and you scroll down on the left side and you look for free online tutorial and then you'll see a place where you can click on that and get video and these video slides. A reminder that we have lots of tools available at our tools and educational library at our menu to the left but we also included links to the two tools we mentioned in this video at this particular page that we're telling you about here for the free online tutorial. Thanks for watching from Delphini Group. Mike joins me when we say we hope that we have helped you.